Today's breakdown is with none other than Jeff Glover, where we go through his first match against Kyo Terra from the BJJ Expo in 2012. Big thanks to Jeff for coming on and doing this, and a special thanks to Stuart Cooper for giving me permission to use the footage. Guys, if you enjoy the video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks. I, re <laughs> I really, really do appreciate this so much. Yeah, so, well, thank you too, brother. It's nice for me as well, so oh, thank you. I guess we'll both get so this is the match, as I say, with uh, Kyo Terra from the 2012 World Expo. It's from Stuart Cooper's YouTube channel. He very, very nicely said that I could use the, the footage, so I, I want to give him a huge, huge shout-out. Uh, Look at all that hair I used to have. I know. That gee's nearly as nice as uh, my one as well. Oh, that <laughs> Without the paragon patch, though. Yeah, so there I did the, the donkey guard. If you want to rewind, I can talk about what just happened right there. A little yeah, bit. absolutely. Um, so, so the whole thing is that, like, um, if 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 somebody punches you, right? Mm -hmm. If they load back, if they load back with that right hand or left hand, whatever is their power hand, and they swing that right hand at you and it hits you, and you shake it off and look at him and smile, yeah, you're winning on some kind of point. <laughs> yeah. There's some, there's something that you're winning on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He took a shot, but there is you took a shot, sure, but he feels like he's losing right now. And it's a part of getting in their head. And I think the jujitsu jiu equivalent of the, the power right hand or the power left, whatever, the power straight, the jujitsu equivalent of that is the rear naked choke or the back take, taking the back and going for the choke. So uh, what I learned was when I would have somebody's back in training or competition, it should be over. And if they escaped my back control, I was frustrated and disappointed. And all these negative emotions started coming into my mind. And I noticed that it would inhibit my ability to execute the jujitsu that I wanted to because I was in a negative state of mind. Okay. So I figured, okay, what are things that bother me? That bothers me. Okay, well, I can use that to bother other people. How do I bother other people? Well, what are the things that bother me? Okay, I don't like it when I get somebody's back and they just escape and defend my best joke. I don't like that at all. It makes me feel like a loser. And it distracts me. So that's my whole idea with Donkey Guard and turning my back to people is I'm giving you the best attack in the game. What's the whole goal of jujitsu, my friend? Number one should be take the back. All roads lead to the back. So when I offer that back to you and you jump on it and you get a grip and you start thinking, oh, man, I got his back. But then all of a sudden I just escape and then I smile at you. You're going to be a little frustrated. Yeah. And I had been doing this for a long time, and that's exactly what Kyle walked into right here, and that's exactly how I beat him in this match is because right off the bat, I set the tone of frustration for him. And, um, you know, he wrote it emotionally. He wrote, he took this match very emotionally and was very um, disturbed by that initial, yo, Jeff turned his back, I jumped on his back, and I couldn't capitalize on it. Yeah, you you had a similar exchange at Metamoris, didn't you? And he didn't take the bait. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> you so. see how I taught Kyle a lesson? You're welcome, Kyle. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so. so yeah, here you see him trying to take my back and I do my thing because if you press pause, one of one of the best things I learned from my coach, the first thing that I learned from Frangia and the time that he spent on me in the first three years of my jiu-jitsu with him was all defense. Was Jeffy escape, Jeffy defend. It was like, what about Jeffy go for a choke? No, Jeffy. <laughs> Jeffy escape and Jeffy defend. And I was like, when do I get to start attacking? It's like when you can stop getting attacked, when you can shut down other people's attacks. Until then, you're freaking useless, and you might occasionally catch things, but we want you to be consistent, Jeffy. We want consistent victories, not occasional accidental victories. And that only comes, like they say in the game of football, with superior defense. So I know my back defense, I'm so confident with it that you can see how well it works here. Kyle's, Kyle's a great back taker, but I made his back take look amateur here, didn't I? Yeah. 
And that's because of my, my coach's philosophy of defense and escapes first. So you see, he's frustrated. He has my back. I escape. I get my back to the ground. And he's forced to switch to a different attack. So if I keep going. So here he kind of has my back. He's trying to set the hooks. He's trying to set a grip. It's not happening. He's forced to try to use a knee belly. You see, he goes for a bottom hook, but I mm -hmm. shut that down and get it out of there. And now he doesn't have any hooks. And now he comes up to a knee belly. I turn away so the knee belly's not efficient. I stay in what I call the gray zone. I stay in between side mounts and in between you on my back. And I just keep shifting and making him uncomfortable and not letting him settle. And he's getting different grips. And none of them are really working to uh, shut down my, my defense. You see here, I put my back on the ground. He's still trying to take my back. But if your back is on the ground, he literally has to pick me up. You see, he's trying to yeah. pick me up to get underneath me. But my ability to glue my shoulders to the ground is too much for him here. And he's already realized, yo, I invested so much time and energy trying to take Jeff's back, man. It didn't lead to anything. Let me switch to something else. Boom. And now look, I'm on top. So I love just how relaxed you look there. I have to just press pause. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can see like my hair is really nice and wavy <laughs> still. Um, you know, I was feeling pretty good about myself back then. You should. But yeah. Um, Delicious. Just calm, just being calm, defending the attacks, you know, calm but alert. And then, uh, like I said, he realized, okay, I've made an investment that didn't go well for me. He's now burnt enough energy. He's probably tired now because, you know, when I don't know if you know, but like me personally, dude, I get exhausted fast when there's a lot of people watching and yeah. you're like the only match going on. Yeah. And there's a lot of there's a lot of, you know, it could go this. It could go that way. What are people going to say if I lose? What are people going to say? But all those thoughts will, will freaking exhaust you. My, you know, and, and go on. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. No, you, you go ahead. My, my first match at Black Belt was um a similar spot. I was asked if I wanted to fight a certain guy and I was like, yeah, yeah, that would be great. There's in the tournament, there were six mat spaces and I thought, yeah, we'll take one of them and it'll be okay. And they stopped the whole tournament, put us in the middle. And I was like, Oh, oh. shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and, uh, you know, managing, managing your, your, uh, energy levels during a match like this is almost more important than like executing jujitsu moves, you know? So that's what's going on right here. Kyle and I are, 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 are fighting our, with our ability to not get exhausted. We're seeing who's, who's better at that. And I think so far I've already kind of taken the level up on that, on him here at this point in the match. So is nervousness something that you would still deal with or? Um, yes, absolutely. You know, it's, it's like, dude, it's always going to be there. This is why if you press pause, this is why I think like in America, do you know what the number one or grand prize in America to win every year is? No. The Academy Award for best actor. Oh, okay. Whoever wins the Academy Award for best actor in America is getting all of the women. You're getting all the free food. Everywhere you go, you're the man. You're getting paid the most money because lying is such a valuable asset in our society. The ability to cover the fact, to cover your ability, uh, the ability to cover up when you're scared, when you're intimidated, and put on game face is so valuable. And people don't talk about this. Um, so that's a big part of what's going on is, is yes, I'm terrified. Yep, I'm, I'm potentially going to be embarrassed right now. I could go home tonight and all my friends are like, damn, dog, you lost to that dude. And I have to sit on that until the next chance I get to fight him again. Mm -hmm. Like all that, yes, I'm dealing with that. And I don't like thinking about that. You know, the consequences are horrible. But if I win, the consequences are great. You know, the the the, uh, the accolades and, and, and all this and that. But I'm absolutely terrified, yes. But I have become the Academy Award Best Actor throughout my years in Jiu-Jitsu. And I am a master of putting on a face that appears to be calm. Interesting. Very interesting. But I wasn't always good at that. And that took a lot of practice. That took a lot of practice to not look antsy and not look nervous and not act twitchy and nervous before matches and chew on your fingernails or like, you know, if I could chew on some bottle can I look nervous. Like it took me a lot of work and self growth and discovery and learning these things about myself to realize one, what I was doing. And two, how to deal with it and stop it. 
because because man, it was it's 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 taken me so far. My ability to cover my face, people all over the world contact me and ask me, Jeff, how do you stay so calm? Why do you look like you're so calm during your matches? And I and I tell everybody the same thing. I'm a good actor. I know how to pretend really well. Really interesting. Really interesting. Was there any books or anything like that that you read that helped or? I haven't read a book since seventh grade. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we'll restart. Was you going for a footlock here? Uh, you know, we were both kind of, um, kind of playing with it a little bit, but I wasn't really committed to it. No, it was just kind of like a scare tactic, just kind of throw a little something out there, make it look like I'm doing something, staying active. Hard to see, but he has a little leg lock on me. He's doing a little straight foot lock on me. That did give me a little bit of pain. I felt the first stack. I threw mine on him. He tried to go for a little toll. We both disappeared on him. Boom. He definitely, he definitely showed me a lot of something, and he wouldn't just look at it. He would, like, try hard to get out mm -hmm. right away. And then here you see me trying to go into his guard. Uh, if you want to rewind it, if you want to rewind it a little bit, I can show you something that's going on here. Okay. So, like, so like you see it, like, rewind it a little more. Mm -hmm. I kind of, I don't know if you see in the background, Comprido. Yeah, um, well, this is the funny thing. I watched this earlier and you've got uh, Cuscino or uh, however you pronounce it. You've got Comprido, Frangia, yeah. you've got Henzo, you've got Carlos yeah. Gracie Jr. all watching yeah. the match, which is yeah. insane. Yeah, and uh, Comprido was actually yelling at the referee, calling me calling me out because he thought I was trying to like run from Kyle's guard or something like that. Okay. But, um, yeah, I mean, I could see why he would say that. I guess I was, but I, I, I tried to jump into his guard as, as soon as I could. I was just kind of trying to, like, recenter the mat, the match back to the middle. That's all I was doing. Okay. But he was like, look at Jaffe. He's running from the fire, ref. Disqualify him. He's running from the fire, whatever he was saying. So I tried to just show him, like, dude, I'm not afraid to try to pass anybody's guard, bro. Like, I'll jump in there. You see, I brought it to Kyle here. I'm trying to stuff his guard. I'm trying to go through it. I'm trying to lift his legs up and jump over. I'm trying to backstep and take angles here on arm attacks. I'm trying to get an upper body grip to, to release my lower body. I'm trying all these things. I'm not like, mm -hmm. I'm the last person to be accused of stalling. And I tried to prove that right here. But at the same, at the same time, I'm not going to like, you know, just, you know, walk rush myself yeah. and, and get exhausted and walk into one of Kyle's traps. Like, it's a balancing act, you know? So here you see Kyle, like, shuts down my guard pass. I try for a double under stack. He inverts, you know? I was like, dude, I'm not passing his little guard right there. Like, right there, it was like, okay, if you want to rewind a little bit. This scramble, I would say kind of evened Kyle and I out. I tried pretty damn hard to pass his little guard right here. I put in a lot of energy. Yeah. And I would say that it was like, okay, that's enough, Jeff. Stop trying to pass now. Okay. You'll see that, like, I do my two little passes, and then when, when I do the stack and he inverts, that's where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to just pass his guard easily, and I'm sure as heck not going to continue trying to pass right now and exhaust myself. Yeah. So here he's kind of doing his little attack. I think he's trying to do, like, a Deli Heva to me. But I just kind of, like, sit back, base myself. I kind of, like, allow the sweep to happen, and then once they come up to capitalize on the sweep, I turn it into a wrestling match. Yeah. If that makes sense. So you see, yeah, I'm kind of like sitting back. I'm not like pushing forward. I'm sitting on my butt. I'm like, come up. Come on. You see, like technically, like who's on top? It's hard to see who's on top right now, you know? Technically, yeah. I'm still on top. But he's, him he's playing a deep half game on you is is a bit crazy. It's not like you're not going to totally understand the position. Yeah, exactly. I love when people try to do deep half guard. I know how to beat deep half guard. You got to jump over the head. So here, I kind of, I gave up a sweep there. So boom, Kyle got two points there. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of messing with the leg lock here. I'm kind of messing with the knee bar. He has his right foot hooked on my calf and I can't unhook it. So that's going to make that knee bar like pretty much impossible. And make it so difficult for you to shrimp out as well. Say that again because I'm make, shrimping. Make it difficult for you to shrimp as well with the footwear yeah. it was. Yep, his footwork's beating me there. He's doing a really good job. So, you know, I have to abandon that and just, okay, I'm not going to get this leg submission. So let's get to guard. So here, press pause. Right here is where I knew I was going to beat him. 
Really? This technique, this technique right here, I knew he was going to fall for this. I could, tell, I could just tell. This is a technique that I've done my whole jiu-jitsu career that I learned when I was a blue belt, obviously. And it's the cross collar. You get a cross collar and you collar drag, right? Mm-hmm. And, and um, what happens is the threat of the collar drag will cause his hands to come down and grab my pants. Left hand, left pants, right hand, right pass, pants. And then he right or left passes guard. It's the most, it's almost the most common guard pass you learn in jujitsu. And, um, the whole thing is my cross collar attack was just to scare him. Right. So that he'll grab my pants and think that he is, has an easy guard pass. Because what I do is I grab his sleeves and you'll see at the end of the match, this was my tester. This was me sticking my toe in the water and seeing how cold it was. And the water was warm. My friend with this little tester, I was like, Ooh, Oh, Kyle looks like he's going to walk right into this. Okay. But don't be so obvious about it, Jeff. Don't throw it at him right away. I wanted him to think that I was feeble. I wanted him to think that I was weak. I took this grip and I kind of pull on it. I'm like, Oh, oh Kyle, you're so strong. And he was starting to like, believe my, my, um, uh, my, um, uh, uh, we my body language. Yeah. He was starting to believe my body language that I was weak and I wasn't explosive. I wanted him to think that I couldn't explode with it. You know, um, so so right here, my left hand is in his collar, and his hands did what I wanted to him to do. His hands went to my pants, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Because what I do is an arm drag. Okay, I use this. I use his grab, him grabbing my pants to set up an arm drag to move to the back, which is which is how I beat him in the end of this match. But this right here is a small version of what you're going to see later. It's me testing the waters and seeing if he will actually grab my pants. He did exactly what I wanted him to do, and I was like, "There's no way Kyle doesn't know this, dog." I even started to doubt myself. I'm like, wait a minute. Did he just do what I think? He, maybe he has a counter for this. I was like, sure, let's see. Maybe he has a counter for this. There's no way he does it, dude. I'm like, he's Kyle Terra. I haven't done a gi match in four years. I haven't used that move in four years, bro, at this point right here. This is a move I was like, well, he grabbed my pants. No way, dude. So let's see how it goes. So here I give a little cross collar. I'm like, oh, I'm feeble. I just fall back down to half guard. Oh, not very strong, Kyle. You're so strong. <laughs> and I'm just saving energy. I'm going to let him try to pass my guard a little bit because I know I can shut it down. And then, boom, he gave me a single. Yeah. I come up on the single, lift him up, dump him down with run the, with a version of run the pipe. So I stand up, run the pipe, boom, got an easy takedown. So now it's two to two, I believe. Or mm -hmm. it might be four to two. So, and even that, I remember thinking like, wow. That single leg was pretty easy, dude. Like my wrestling, my wrestling was so strong at this point. You know, when I grabbed a single leg, it didn't matter if you were Kyle Terra or whoever you were, I was going to run you down with it. So here we're grip fighting a little bit. I'm going to see his guard. Let me see what Kyle's guard has for me. Cause I just brought this. You see, I start pushing on the pass. Like I'm standing up. I'm trying to like nullify his guard. He tries to do his Dele Hiva, but I do this thing where I drive my knees together mm -hmm. and it makes it really hard to use Dele Hiva against me. So then I start putting pressure on the pass. He tries to get into like a little X guard, deep half guard, waiter guard combo. I fake a little leg lock. I'm starting to like, okay, I'm starting to use some energy here. Let me go for, I'm probably going to let him sweep me here pretty soon. Like if you see the sweeps he does, they're more like me letting him come on top yeah. of me. And the sweeps that I do are pretty forceful. So here I'm just kind of managing his guard while trying not to look like I'm stalling and I'm trying to pass as well because I don't want the referee to say anything about me not not trying to pass. So I'm not just, you know, I'm trying to like back step here. I'm defending his pass. I mean, I'm defending his sweeps. He's trying to take my back here. I'm doing all my counter. This is all the work that I do on the bouncy ball. If you see on the yeah. big uh, exercise balls, I can float over people's guards like this all day and not get swept. Like, you see, he's got some, and Kyle has some pretty tricky guard work that he tried to attempt there. If you want to rewind a little bit. Um, I was definitely in some hot waters, like looking back on it, you know, it's like, dude, I was in the right. If you want to pause like somewhere in here, like I'm right in the middle. I'm under, I'm on top of one of the best guards in the world right now, right here. And, um, you know, it's, it's the, the potential for Kyle to take my back or sweep me was pretty high, but I didn't care, dude. I was like, I, I, I trusted myself. I trusted my jujitsu. I trust my guard pass. I know I have just as good of a, as a guard pass as I do a sweep game, even though you don't hear about it or see about it as much. I think I proved it here a little bit, but, um, you know, it's basically me just here dealing with Kyle's guard and, and countering everything and going, going move for move with him here. And, uh, 
Yeah, he does eventually sweep me though here. So let's see how it goes. But I'm floating over him, you know, I'm balancing here, I'm balancing there. He tries to roll me here, I base out. He tries to do a little deep half guard here a little bit to me, it looks like. He tries to switch it to the waiter, which I'm not a big fan of the waiter sweep. I never really never really like use it. Yeah, he's not inside the knee there though, is he? Which would make it really difficult. So balance is yeah. one thing that you're like have an insane amount of. And is it just from the, the balance ball and like skateboarding and things like that? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Yeah, so here I'm going deep in the waters with Kyle, man. We're getting, you see, he's got that cross, he has that cross collar on me too. But I stay low, you know what I'm saying? I'm not like sitting over him, giving him something to work with. Yeah. I'm really good at like falling up and getting into a tight little ball, you know? So, and here you see me working the crowd. The crowd is really into this match too, man. Like, I'm not surprised. The amount of legends that are sat at the, the side of the map is insane. Yeah. Yeah. This is 2012. I hadn't had a gi match in four years prior to this. So here Kyle doing a little barambolo and me scrambling. You see, I scramble, yeah. dude. Like, I, that's the thing about me is I'm, I'm, I I can do methodical. Look at me pushing the pass a little bit, trying to push through in his half guard. That kind of worked on him. He was like, oh, shit. He didn't like that. So I try it again, and I think it kind of works. I forget what happens here. Yeah, I'm fighting grips with him. This is fun for me, you know, because I hadn't done a gi match in so long. The grip fighting was fun. I do this thing where I force, you see how I drive my hip forward into the half guard like that? Yeah. To get past the knee shield, because his knee shield is blocking me there. I was going to so say, is that to put the hips flat to the mat? Yeah, it's like I break my hips and start thrusting forward. It didn't exactly work, but it definitely, like, scared him off right there. You see, it almost worked right there. I remember, I remember being surprised, like, "Whoa, that worked on Kyle pretty well." Like, so we're talking about here. Yeah, his knee shield. You see that knee shield? This is a notoriously difficult guard to deal with. So I kind of let myself get swept a little bit to do it as well. I like break my hips, sit mm -hmm. on my side, because I know I can get back up. Like, oh, he wants to sweep. I'm just like back up. No, nope, never mm -hmm. mind. I experimented with it. I didn't like it, so I got back on top. That's incredible. Yeah, a little tricky. Kind of hard to explain, but here I'm grip fighting. He's trying to use a little De La Hiva on me. But I know how to stay low, and I don't really, like, fall into those De La Hivas. I, I mean, those Baron Bolos that he's trying to do. Like, I don't follow Baron Bolos. I always just sit back. See, I just sit back like this. Mm -hmm. He's trying to do that short footlock on me, and it's kind of hurting kind of hurting i had to do a little bit of leg pummeling to get out of there he felt it he felt it wasn't gonna work he abandoned it and there he got two points but you see that was more than me like letting him on top i wasn't like swept i didn't like fall down you know I, I let him on top as a way of like okay i was like okay i'm getting pretty tired here of playing in his guard i'll be willing to give up two points to play in my guard so and your guard happened. being this grip with the lapel under the um under the hips so you've yeah yeah passed. is that the near side the same side or the cross side lapel i mean it's an outside single it's the cross lapel and it's you've... definitely the cross lapel. okay yeah. and you've gripped the knee there so that he can't sprawl yeah so so like um the way it, it, i mean it's just the speed and accuracy in which i get to a single leg mm -hmm. is, is is such a big part of my game and i demonstrate it here like you know i i, I sweep them back pretty quick here i got the single leg He's trying to knee slice. If I just I'm take low. it back to where the setup was from. So yeah. I think you've... A little further, right here. As soon as he comes up, as soon as he... I'm like, okay, I'm going on bottom. I'm like, you can come on top, but only into my single. See, my hand is my arm yeah. was already there. Yeah. And I pass the lapel now. Cross. You see? So as soon as he comes on top, it's not like you come into my guard and then I think of an idea. It's like you're coming into a dangerous guard already. Mm-hmm. It's not just some neutral guard. It's like, so he already feels off balance. I think he kind of knows, like, shit. Jeff's got a good grip on that single leg. And I can feel, I'm like, okay, let's see. A little left, a little right. Which way is this going to work? Wait for him to shift his weight a little bit. He tries back step. He realized that wasn't going to work. Because I had the lapel. You see how he had to bend in the back step? Yeah. If you want to rewind that for a second. The reason he had to abandon the back step is because of the way I had his lapel. 
Okay. So he back steps, and normally this is a great position, dude, to deal with it. You, you get an Isha, he slices the knee, the knee touches it low, and then you back step, and then you can get into this reverse half guard position from there. Yeah. But and the way I'm holding his lapel, still have that the way, and I'm starting to there. sit up now, he's going to fall back to his left side right now because of the fact that I just sat up there. You see that? Mm -hmm. So his adjustment to that is to abandon the, the back step, drive that left leg, step that left leg forward, and he ends up being in my single leg. So either way, it didn't matter which way he went. If he went back step, I was going to sweep him. If he steps forward, you're giving me the single leg, and then I come up and run the pipe with it. Let's see what happens. Uh, he realizes, oh shit, I'm off balance. I better come up to the single, okay. and then I get that single and run the pipe. Pretty textbook wrestling with a lapel, though. And you see, I'm still holding on to that lapel. You see it run down his body like that, through his legs? Yeah. Did you see um, Keenan Cornelius did something kind of similar against Roberto Jimenez? Nice. Yeah. Recently. It's wrestling, man. Just do wrestling moves with jujitsu grips. You yeah. Know? So, so I know he's pretty frustrated at this point with my single legs. That's the second time I swept him with pretty much the same thing. He's starting to realize, like, yo, dude, Jeff's single legs are on point. And there, there he tried to see that was pretty slick what Kyle did there. If you want her won that. Okay, he went waiter. And then he does his little reverse waiter thing. It's kind of. And he gets into this position. Now, there, see, see how close he is to my back there? Yeah, there was a, ch there was a tiny little chair set. Yep, he had a nice window of opportunity on me there, there. but he just couldn't just capitalize on me. He just couldn't like sink his grip, nice. you know, because I'm, I'm so aware of what he's doing. I know what he's trying to do. I know he wants my back. And um, like I said earlier, I've spent so much time in jujitsu, like defending the back and escaping the back. It's one of the most frustrating things to try to do to me. And every time he does it, he realizes like, man, I can't get this dude's back. And it just frustrates him. And my back's completely gone. Now he has to let go of that grip because it's not helping him anymore. So one thing I just noticed there, um, and I just want to see if it was intentional. So he comes up here and he goes for the ch chair set. And now rather, because he's got this grip, obviously, on the, uh, the collar, rather than you trying to spin in or even trying to spin out, your hips come back towards the camera. Was that there? Just there? Yeah, so that section right there. As he goes, and he's coming for the knee, you follow him backwards. Was that intentional? It's hard to, I mean, you're looking at this right, and you're like, why doesn't he take your back, dude? If you paused right there, and yeah. you just looked at that picture right there, you'd be like, oh, there's somebody about to get their of back. Of course, taken. yeah. It, and, and it's like, dude, look how close he is to my back. The thing is, what you kind of don't see is my left arm. My left arm is threatening deep half guard. Okay. If he was to come up and move forward towards my back, I would drop down and dip underneath him and land in half deep half guard. Mm -hmm. And he realizes that, dude. He's so smart. Kyle's so smart and aware of his body, dude, and, and knows what his opponents are doing. Like, he recognizes that. That's why he goes, eh, eh, I'd rather just lay back and try to play guard again. So rather, yeah. So in that position where 99 out of a hundred people would be worried about their back, you're actually looking at the opening for deep half and thinking about it right now. I'm sort of doing the movements in my head. It, I would 100% abort the back take if I was Kyle. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's smart dog. He realized like, ah, oh, shit, I don't want to go into Jeff's guard again. That's and we're so both doing that. We're both trying to be like, spend the most time in our guards mm -hmm. because it's time laying down. You conserve energy laying down. So he's smart, dude. He's a master of saving energy. So he goes back to his guard, starts setting up his thing. I do my thing where I just sit down. You see that? Mm -hmm. I just sit down because it's like, he tries to come up and capitalize on that. We get into like a Ram battle head to head. Who's going to double leg. And he doesn't want to go double legs with me, dude. So he, he, he goes back again, he goes back to his guard. Let's see here. I actually kind of get past his guard a little yeah, bit. You have this a is, deep underhook there. Yeah. There's a lot that happened right there. And here, I know I want to see his push in the way. He's like, Whoa. And I do this little reverse arm lock thing that he kind of rolled out of. I'm still on top. The referee stops us because the belt's all awkward. 
But yeah, now we're starting to get in deep waters here. Now we're both starting to breathe a little bit. No, we're both warm. We've had a few exchanges already. Kyle's starting to realize um, how frustrating it is to try to take my back. Here he goes again. He's trying to leg drag and take my back here. But he just, boom, gets shoved away. It's not happening, dude. You're not taking, now here it is. Remember I talked about this yeah. earlier? He so. did exactly what I thought, what I wanted him to do. And I'm looking over at my teacher like, no way, dog. No <laughs> way. Look at dude. He's doing it. And I'm just keeping a cool face. Don't be all surprised about it, Jeff. Just da -da -da. Oh, yeah, he's grabbing my pants. No, no big deal. I didn't want you to do that. Okay. I'm not excited about you grabbing my pants. <laughs> no. So. That's normal. And then right when he grabs my pants, you see um, I double up. I let go of the collar and both my hands grab his sleeves. And this stops him from passing, and he takes a little bit of an angle. And you'll see the arm drag. There's a lot of talking I can do, but let's watch it here for a sec. See, grip in there, you've got a, a collar. My pen, see, and I let go. I'm like, oh, you're holding my pants. Single. Oh, I love collar drag. Oh, I'm so weak. And he goes around. Yeah. Keep holding the pants. To this That's where I hold the pause right there. My right hand is holding his sleeve. Mm -hmm. The that right hand holding his sleeve is preventing Kyle's left hand. That, that Kyle's left hand is holding my pants. Do you see that? Yeah. And he's passing there to his left the side. Switch. If, he, if his left hand lets go of those pants, he's going to come up and hug my head and really have side mount on me. Mm -hmm. But he can't do it. It's hard to see because my right hand is holding that same sleeve and I'm pushing it away from me. And your base is so, this elbow, right? It's, it's, it's at the sleeve. I'm holding him like right here on yeah. his sleeve. And yeah. Like a pistol grip and I'm pushing it forward. So he's trying to come back. And he realizes, like, shit, I can't get Jeff's head control, but I don't want to go back in front of his guard. So he sits there for a second to, to, to analyze and, and, and calculate what he's going to do next. But he doesn't realize that he's a sitting prey right here for the arm drag. His right arm, not his left arm, his right this arm one. is very susceptible right now. Mm -hmm. If my right hand lets go of that sleeve and makes a quick little switch up to his arm, the drag is right there. And you'll see it happen right now. So how much weight do you have on this left elbow? This elbow that's on the floor, how much of your weight would you say was in there? That's supporting all of our weight. That's supporting him and me. Okay. Yeah, that's a good observation. Absolutely. That's a big part of why this works too. And you see, I actually get up onto the hand. Yeah. And now here I'm just like, I, I'm like, I look up at Bill. I'm like, dude, he's sitting right in our little spot that we're masters of. Me and Bill have been doing this move since we're kids. I made eye contact with Bill and he was like, dude, no way. <laughs> Bill really? fought on this show as well, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He won his match. It was one of our better days as a team, as a, as a duo. Bill and I both had big, big wins that day. I, I can't remember so here, who he uh, fought. Say that again? I can't remember who he fought. Um, he had a match with um, uh, Nino Shembri, actually. That's it. It was, yeah. Um, so Kayo there has just switched his grip. Yep, he did exactly what I wanted him to. He's doing, that's what I'm saying. This whole time he was doing this, in this course of like, whatever it is, three seconds, right? Mm -hmm. The amount of thoughts that went through my head in that three seconds would, would, is, is really hard to explain. So he switches there. Oh, I'm talking to Bill visually right now. We're making eye contact and having a whole conversation right now, dude. Okay, and then? Then I let go of his sleeve, and you see the hand go. Okay. Boom. It's, you can't see the drag, dude. You can't see where the arm drag happens, but my yeah. right hand made a switch to an arm drag here. Yeah. And it was a simple arm drag, dude. Marcelo Garcia shit, dude. Boom, he tries to backstep. He's starting to realize, like, now, damn. Okay, my back attack sucks, but Jeff's is really good. And now here I'm starting to set up and threaten two things. I'm threatening a bow and arrow, and I'm threatening a triangle. If he runs from my bow and arrow, he's going to walk into my triangle. There. You yeah. see the triangle's already yeah. on. He's already in the triangle. So he decides, oh, shit, if I come on top, uh, better stay there. And that gives me my time to come on top. Mm -hmm. And he tries, oh, no, I'm mounted. But it's too late. Dude, my yeah, legs are wrapped around him. It's too late. I'm already behind him, fully behind him, with a grip on the back. I could bow and arrow choke him right now if I wanted. But I wanted to try to establish points. I didn't want to tap him. I wanted to get points because I was down on points. So I ended up scoring six points right now. So the, the, the match ends at 10 points for me and six points for Kyle. So I beat him by four points. And right here, my legs are wrapped completely around his waist. I'm directly behind him. My arm is around his neck. I was going to say, and is this a rear naked choke? Right. I could have squeezed it. I actually had mercy on Kyle, dog. And I hate to say this, but at this point, I was like, dude, I don't want to tap this dude right here. For whatever reason, 
I was like, I've, I've, I've made my point. I just had a great scramble to win this. I know I'm going to win right now. I saw the clock. There's like 10 seconds left. I was like, should I throw a Nicky Rodriguez rear naked choke on this dude's face <laughs> yeah. and squeeze the shit out of him and tap him? And I looked over and I was like, nah, dog. And I looked and I, and I tucked down, I, I looked down at Kyle and I was like, Hey Kyle, this was a great match, brother. Because I, by the way, I outweighed him by like 15 pounds at least. Oh really? Yeah. So I was telling him like, Hey Kyle, you fought me, you fought me really good little homie. Like, damn, I'm so impressed with you, dog. What a great match. It was an honor to have this match with you. I'm talking to him right there. You see? Yeah. I'm like, Kyle, this is a great match, brother. You fought hard, brother. Thank you, man. And that's where I sit up. I was like, woo, I won. Give him a pat on the shoulder, help him up. Cause he's my brother respect you know what i'm saying mad respect for kyle dog came out and did his best against me that's insane. and then i'm excited and bill cooper comes over yeah. my homie since day one picks me up shows me some love I just got... and we just had our best day in front of all the greats of the greats and get my belt tie it up one thing I learned from Frenchie is never act all excited about victories. And don't be all ra- don't be all raising your second hand and being like, yeah. Okay. Always show respect, dude. Keep your arm down. So he raises my hand, a quick little bow, some love to Kyle, mad respect. You're nothing without your opponents. That's amazing. Amazing. And so much going on. Henzo doesn't look too pleased. Which is a shame. No, I, I do no like that's Henzo. not true. Henzo loves me, man. Henzo really? was stoked about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Henzo is uh, the coolest guy in the world. He's he should super... be the president of the universe. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so what I, what I always do at the end is I ask anyone if they've got uh, sponsors or shout outs or anything. I'm, I'm sure you've got plenty Um I know that you've got the BJJ Fanatics that I'll link to, as I say. Have you got anything else that's happening? Or um, um, so I've I've been sponsored by by Lucky, my Lucky Geek, for fifteen years now, and uh, supporting my Lucky Geek and buying from them helps helps me out a lot. Okay. Um, other than that, though, nothing really important comes to mind there's so, lots of other little companies i work with and i love them all but there's too many to mention here now um so we spoke just before i started um recording and said that i initially met you um at a seminar at ryan halls um how do people contact you for seminars i know that you're in the uk recently so um well i think the best way to get a hold of me is year. facebook or instagram and okay. I'm on Instagram, Jeff Glover BJJ. It's like my third Instagram page. I had two of them get shut down, and I don't know why. I don't know if it was weed or I whatever. I don't know. I can't Conspiracy remember the name theories. of the last one. I can't remember the name of the last one. Jupac, yeah. That's I think it. the Flat Earth thing pissed off the CIA, and the CIA shut down my Instagrams. I don't know, man. I have theories. <laughs> I have theories about weed. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. They come together. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, if you want to contact me, you know, you can hit me up on, on Instagram or Facebook. I respond to pretty much every message I get on there. I can I like, can vouch for like that. Like I have something better to do. I can vouch for that, seeing as um, you got straight back to me. Yeah, yeah. I did um, I did speak to Stuart first, and I was like, oh, do you think I could um, – how do you think it's the best way to get in contact? And he was like, oh, I could probably hit him up. And I was like, well – I'll try first, and then if not, I'll I'll bring I'll send in the big dogs. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah shout out to Stuart Cooper, man. Stuart Cooper, by the way, great guy, great videos. If you're a fan of jujitsu, and 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 if you're a fan of film, absolutely, this guy makes jujitsu videos. This this guy makes jujitsu videos that that like are artistic and beautiful to watch, and and add a special a special um, how do I say energy to the to, to jujitsu that makes it look visually just i just love his videos let's just put it that way Absolutely. shout out to stuart cooper yeah big up to very stuart. artistic 